The Democrats have pushed half of Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion relief plan through a House committee Thursday, and this has advanced the $1,400 stimulus payments for Americans like yourself. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your stimulus check update and stimulus package update. Yes folks, a $1,400 stimulus check will be going into your bank account very soon. And just a reminder, I'm still doing the Amazon gift card giveaway. Now folks, if you didn't win a gift card, don't feel bad because I'll be doing many more giveaways in the future. In fact, if we get my channel to 75,000 subscribers by the end of this month, I will be giving away five $100 Amazon gift cards, all of them for free. But folks, that only happens if we're able to get my channel to 75,000 subscribers. So if you want to enter the giveaway, this is what you have to do is subscribe to my channel, turn on post notifications, give this video a like, and leave me a comment down below telling me how much you think our third stimulus check should be. And also folks, don't forget to share my videos with your friends and family. On the COVID relief package, we outlined for the president the provisions that we have proposed as part of an approximately $600 billion package. He explained in more depth areas that uh, were not fleshed out as much in the package, the $1.9 trillion package. And it was a very good exchange of views. I wouldn't say that we came together on a package tonight. No one expected that in a two-hour meeting. But what we did agree to do is to follow up and talk further at the staff level and amongst ourselves and with the president and vice president on how we can continue to work together on this very important issue. All of us are concerned about struggling families, teetering small businesses, an overwhelmed health care system, getting vaccines out and into people's arms, and strengthening our economy and addressing the public health crisis that we face. So I think it was an excellent meeting and we're very appreciative that as his first official meeting in the Oval Office, uh, the President chose to spend so much time with us in a frank and very useful discussion. Finally, let me just say that we have demonstrated in the last year that we can come together on a bipartisan package dealing with the COVID crisis. In fact, we've done that not just once or twice, we've done it five times. And I am hopeful that we can once again pass a sixth bipartisan COVID relief package. Any more colleagues want to say anything? The House bill will provide hundreds of billions of dollars for state and local governments and to boost vaccination efforts, and increase unemployment benefits and federal health care assistance. The Democratic leaders hope for House passage later this month, with Senate approval and a bill on Biden's desk by mid-March. There are amendments to reduce the $400 extra in weekly jobless benefits that Democrats want to provide through August and exempt the small businesses from Democrats' plans to gradually raise, to gradually raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Others would have limited emergency grants for undergraduates to U.S. citizens. Not only that, but the GOP proposals would also have put strings on emergency funds to help schools reopen safely. But the Congressional Budget Office expects the economy to add an average of 521,000 jobs a month this year alone. In addition, for SI and SDI recipients, Social Security recipients, and retired railroad workers who were not required to file a tax return in 2018 or 2019 were still eligible for the first two stimulus payments. Supplemental Security income recipients without dependent children should have received stimulus payments automatically without having to file any additional paperwork as well. People who are part of the Social Security Disability Insurance Program who were not required to file tax returns in 2018 or 2019 should also have automatically received a first and second stimulus payment. Now the Ways and Means Committee approved its $940 billion chunk of Biden's proposal on a 25 to 18 party line vote. On Wednesday, the Education and Labor Committee approved another top Democratic priority, a boost in the federal minimum wage from $725 to $15 an hour. 
Now, when Pelosi was asked if the overall House bill would include the minimum wage increase, she told, she said, yes, it will. And we are very proud of that. A bit of common ground is that we're, we're talking from data. What does the data show that we need? And the, the president's going to have his staff get back to us and we'll kind of compare our, our data points. That's good news. The, the meeting went much longer than we had anticipated anyway. W were you surprised? And what was the reason for that? Uh, I'm not surprised in retrospect. Uh, Jerry Moran said at one point, uh, uh, I enjoy talking to people. And the president said, so do I. And everybody laughed, understanding that that's the reputation of both. And so there was a lot that was covered. Very respectful and very patient with us. Uh, and it was a good meeting. You know, the cynics will look at this and say, well, <laughs> the Republicans have come in here with this really small number that doesn't help, help out the cities at all. The Democrats are never going to go for that. So the Democrats will go ahead and push through something closer to their version. And then the Republicans will go, see, they never wanted bipartisanship after all. How wrong are the cynics? So, Shepard, they need to be proven wrong. They may be right. There's nothing guaranteed in this process. It is how our founding fathers set it up. And I go back to the need to have data. I've been a big advocate for state and local aid. But one of the data points was a recent report from J.P. Morgan using data from the states saying that most states have, not, have, have lost less than 2% of, of their revenue year over year. A state like New York is down 1.5%. My state's been hit hard, 4.6% decline in revenue. That's the sort of data we need to make a wise decision, not just throw money out there and hope that it works. The president's spokesperson, Jen Psaki, said today from the briefing room, the president's not concerned about going too, small, uh, do, going too big here. He's concerned that he might go too small. The White House clearly believes that they need a large injection of money, that the cities and the states need help getting their feet back under them after they put so much money out. Do you see a world where the two sides can come together, something much bigger than where you are and maybe smaller than where President Biden is? I'd rather say we're going to be driven by data. The CBO is estimating, I think, growth in 2021 is going to be 3.8 percent. There's a recent survey of uh, Wall Street Journal did of analysts, and it's 4.2 percent. That's pretty robust growth. If you look at information from the Fed, it shows that credit card delinquencies have gone down. Mortgage uh, foreclosures have gone down. Saving, savings rates have increased. So if anything, it shows, and that's across all quintiles, if anything, it shows that the American family through this has done surprisingly well undoubtedly related to all the COVID packages we put out. If we're driven by data, we'll come to the right figure. That figure should not be foreordained. Hmm. Senator Cassidy. Good evening, everybody. We have just had a very productive, cordial two-hour meeting with the president and the vice president and some of their key aides to discuss the next steps that's all the news in this video, folks, and don't forget to enter my giveaway.